Well, hello. We are finally live for this amazing discussion on a very precise topic. Well, let's welcome this amazing spotlight session building for Bharat. And when you know, when we hear Bharat, one thing always strikes on my mind is the payment gateway system or the payment system. And Paytm is uh, something which is always synonymous. So let me now uh, welcome our panelist and our speaker, Mr. Shetha Janan. He is AVP Design for Paytm, and I am very glad to have you. Well, uh, just to give you uh, a very very precise idea about what we are going to do over here, uh, you know very well that there are a few considerations so when you have to captivate an Indian market. Indian markets, uh, of course, are secular, and 1.3 billion uh, is the population which we are captivated with. But there are various diversified minds, various diversified strategies, and we have to take into account the many more things, many X factors while building something for Bharat. Well, to capitalize on the same, following all the cultures, all the regions, all the languages, and to clear all the barriers, we have this amazing session. Strategized specifically for people uh, who are captivating towards building for Bharat, uh, you know, mindset. And I would now again request our panelists uh, to provide an important guidance, design guideline uh, regarding this topic, building for Bharat. Uh, yes, let's again welcome Shitesh Janan. He is AVP Designs for PTM and give up a hand of applause on the chats. Sir, the session is all yours and it's lovely to have you. Um, Sir, you are clearly visible you're clearly visible can you see my screen is your, your screen is clearly visible perfect great so uh, <clears throat> thank you so much thank you so thank much you. everyone first of all for uh, the opportunity uh, i'm equally excited to be here uh, just to share some insights on building for bharat this has been my uh, area of interest for the past decade or so and been with paytm for almost close to two and a half years now a little bit more than two and a half years so we'll jump right in. Uh, just a quick uh, thing. I work at Paytm and we have a big design team. And uh, there's a creative team. There's a product design team. I work in the product design team. And we have two main ecosystems that we work with. Right? Uh, one is the consumer tech ecosystem, which is the main Paytm app. And the other is the merchant ecosystem. So when you look at anything related to a merchant, whether it's your devices, whether it's your QR codes, offline businesses, anything related to, you know, uh, big merchants, B2B products. So I lead that team, which is about a team of 15 people uh, there. I also look at design operations and design research. Right? So being a designer, I'm always fascinated by uh, India uh, and, uh, you know, being able to research and, you know, build products around that. Right? So I've kind of divided the talk into five to six different sections, probably about five minutes to seven minutes each section will take. And hopefully we'll have some time in the end for some questions as well. Right? So we'll do a little bit about the internet and the next billion users, which is primarily you know the main audience that we kind of cater to. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the digital India revolution that's been happening, which we all are very familiar with. Uh, and then go a little bit deeper into understanding Bharat. Because I believe that if you really want to understand how do you want to build for them, uh, it's important for us to really understand that itself. Right? Uh, and then a couple of two to three frameworks, like I know there's always some people in the audience who just love frameworks and you know some tools and some you know like specific um, theories, right? So I want to introduce a couple of them to you, uh, which we use regularly in our work, and then also share a couple of examples from Paytm as to how we kind of leveraged all of these uh, into our day-to-day -day work, right? and then eventually obviously uh, we'll be able to conclude uh, out there, right? So quick facts initially, right? I think um, we all are very familiar with this, but sometimes it comes very you know, as a shock, when you suddenly you realize what it's all about, right? So almost uh, more than 3 billion users, uh, more than 3 billion people around the world live at less than $2 a day, right? That's about like 150, 160 rupees uh, a day, uh, almost like a little bit close to the half population of the, of the world, right? And despite of the fact that we have technology which is, you know, claiming that we can do a lot more to kind of address people who are living in that. That's one fact that you can just keep in mind. Also, very interestingly, uh, 10 years ago, right, only 6% of the population in low income and lower middle class income countries had access to the internet. Today, nearly one in every three people in the same category has that, right? which means that you know, with technology and you can see a clear trend of the increase in the number of people who are accessing the internet also. Right? 
So next billion users is something which I personally am really fascinated by. And I believe that, you know, Preteam as an organization, we're really intrigued by the NBU. Uh, in fact, we really believe in our vision of you know, getting a lot of people from the NBU into mainstream uh, economics. Uh, by providing financially inclusive, uh, financially inclusive products and right, services. So what it is basically, I think some of you have already, probably majority of you may already know about it, uh, but the term was coined by Google in 2015, and it's been a topic of research for people around the world, and you know, basically industry as well as academia, uh, what we now colloquially call as Bharat, right? We have been kind of, kind of used interchangeably as well. Uh, I think it's extremely relevant for India, and a lot of other developing nations and markets around the world. Right? But for us, of course, at Paytm, our main objective is to build for Bharat. And you know, we can ask this question a lot of times uh, in our leadership panels as well, that are we thinking of expanding some other geographies? And we always say that there is so much to solve for, so much to build for Bharat right now. Uh, you know, I think a couple of lifetimes might still not be enough for that. Right? So we firmly believe in the potential of Bharat. We firmly believe in the fact that Bharat deserves to get amazingly designed products and services and eventually basically you know, build for them. And this basic, the next billion users that we're talking about, three main characteristics define them, right? And we'll go a little bit deeper into one of those, each of those one by one later on as well. But they are very dynamic in nature, right? And I think, you know, what has happened in the past few years, if you look at, uh, our attention spans have got lower and lower, right? We kind of want instant gratification we don't have so much of patience of getting things done, right? So this, the NBU in particular, you'll notice is very dynamic, always on the move. Uh, more often than not, probably 99% of the times, I would say, they possess a very high-end phone, right? Uh, India is one of those countries where you actually have access to really good quality smartphones uh, and a generation which literally skipped the entire desktop revolution. There are people who went from no computing device to straight away possessing a very high-end computing phone, right? A high-end computing device in the form of a smartphone, right? And people who probably skipped the entire desktop, entire laptop uh, revolution went straight on to them, right? And obviously, because you are on the move, you have access to these tools, we are very high on data consumption as well, right? I also wanted to quote, you know, Pai Lerner, one of my favorite, uh, you know, um, uh, academicians, and she writes a lot. She has a very interesting book called uh, Next Billion Users, Digital Life Beyond the West. And she talks about this phenomenon that, you know, the internet, if you look at, is basically always an ongoing project. If you talked about internet as it was about 30 years ago, it was very different. 15 years ago, it was very different. And today, it is very different, right? And it's constantly going to be shaped by the people who use it, right? And in fact, there's some very interesting data points which talk about this notion that people in smaller towns and you know villages are consuming internet so much, right? And that is really changing the way society is really functioning altogether. So internet is obviously playing a huge role in all of this in trying to bring people who have been left out of the whole mainstream to suddenly get them back into the mainstream. So I believe that you know one of the most interesting places to building products right now is Bharat, and uh, we see a lot of people coming back from outside. You know, I moved back in 2009 from US itself uh, to kind of start building products out here. Of course, back then we didn't have a very strong product-driven. Uh, we were not a very strong product-driven company. Uh, country. We didn't have as many products as we have today. Uh, the amount of ecosystem evolution that has happened when it comes to products is just mind-boggling. Right? So I also wanted to talk about you know ten kind of pointers for understanding Bharat better, right? and I believe that you know the more you travel across the country, the more you start to realize all of this. Right? First and foremost, you know I'm always reminded of this fact that we are building in a trust deficient society. Right? What does that basically mean? If you remember, some of you might remember, like if you're old as me, that when we were kids, right, we literally went, you know, we had open doors in our neighbors, right? Like we could just leave our doors open in societies and nothing would happen, right? People would not you know, worry about much, maybe because there were lesser devices, lesser products out there. But at the same time, we trusted each other more, right? We trusted people more. Today, we of course have shifted that trust from you know, people to wanting to shift that trust towards products and devices, right? And that I feel is a substantial shift, right? If you look at, there are a lot of memes that go around, right? Where you talk about, uh, I want to get a medical checkup done. And uh, 
often the first thing we do is go and search on Google. Right? So we rely, we rely or we trust Google or we trust these service providers more for information than probably a qualified doctor, right? And there's this meme which show that you know in a doctor's uh, clinic it said that you know um, stay away from Google doctors. You know it takes years to kind of become a doctor, right? And there's a lot of people who are you know they would kind of go and find information and believe that information, trust that information. And this is what I feel is a very substantial shift in the way we think about societies itself, right? And also when you look at the fact that we have more access to devices, right? So number of wireless devices in India has gone almost, it went to a high of 1.18 billion. Now it's almost like about 1.15 billion. And that's a huge number. 1.15 billion people having access to wireless subscriptions, right? Like wireless devices. And there's this, you know, undoing joke around the country, right? That um, many times we feel that we don't have access to, like not many people have access to basic facilities like sanitation facilities, but we have access to mobile phones, right? People may not have access to food and shelter, but they will have access to a mobile phone. And that's been the, the revolution that has happened in the past, you know, across the country, if you look at it, right? Apart from that, I feel, you know, the fact that we are now surrounded by devices, can you just look at around you, um, you know, and I'm always reminded whenever I go to travel and at an airport, I have to take out my, you know, do the security check. And you have to take out these devices for you know, security check. You know, in comes, out comes the laptop, out comes the mobile phone, out comes the Bluetooth speakers, out comes the, you know, camera chargers, out comes something else. And there's a Kindle, there's an iPad, and, you know, there's just so many devices all around us. Our lives have been gadgetified. We have so much devices all around us. Right? And I think... This is a substantial trend which you will see even when you go to the hinterlands of the country as well. Right? But people are now becoming more comfortable with gadgets and devices all around. That was the first one. And second one we already talked about briefly, uh, internet penetration. But so one was mobile subs the wireless subscription. But when you look at internet in particular, right? Around Diwali, probably sometime next month, we are going to have 5G networks in our country. 820 million. We have crossed that number for 4G subscribers and that number may feel like nothing to you but when you think about this fact that that is more than twice the population of the United States and it's more than twice the population of the United States and UK put together right and in 2020 alone right where we had the main COVID era almost 100 million subscribers went on to the internet right? and just mind-boggling now because we have almost 99% 4G connectivity across the country and I could sit in a small town in Bihar in fact during the COVID times that's where I was uh, and basically doing work from home having a perfectly fine work from home because I had 4G connection out there and these facts just helps you start to thinking what are the possibilities out there right uh, in fact we have the 4G networks keeps growing the connectivity keeps growing infrastructure is also keep growing as well as we'll now see 5G rollout as well that's going to happen and I feel that internet and mobile are two key things that really play the role of equalizer. Right? When it comes to society equalizations, uh, you'll see internet playing a huge role, right? Somebody who was at a disadvantage before because of internet and technology now in their hands, they're able to, you know, uh, really think uh, for around the world, right? Third is, of course, data consumption. I think when you start to observe the trends around data consumption, right, and all these trends, right? kind of inform us in the way we think about design, in the way we think about how we are thinking about building products. So we have kind of the highest amount of data consumption in the world. Right? Like on an average, uh, whichever area you look at, right, whether it's education, whether it's entertainment, whether it's fintech, uh, whether it's you know doing your e-commerce, I think all of them combined together has really been driving across the whole um, uh, you know, data consumption uh, numbers, right? Average five hours per day. In fact, now that number might have gone even higher. I think from about uh, average, we have about like 12 gigabytes of GB use, uh, used per month, right? And sometimes I think about this, right? That just maybe about four to five years ago, we were relying on one GB of data per month because our subscription tax allowed us that. And now we have, you know, unlimited data. We have two GB data per day, right? Or you can probably get more data. And that's what gives you some very interesting insights as to how telecoms, right, like the geos of the world, like the airtels of the world, have really fueled this growth of internet and the fact that you can actually build consumer products for Bharat, which can be accessed by people in very small, small towns and villages as well. Right? The next is basically because of the fact that we have 4G, 
we have become a video first generation i mean like my kids when they were studying so i have two daughters so when they were going to school starting to do their uh, classes it was all video first right zoom platform if you look at any uh, things around you uh, it's all video first in fact i met this guy uh, vishu uh, in delhi sometime back right and he's a content creator and he's like you know my life revolves around creation of videos right i just create videos and this is a time when you know tiktok was still around since so a couple of years back but his aspiration was just to just create videos and the fact that you know being able to communicate in video right the fact that we have 4g the fact that we have you know cheap mobile data is kind of enabling us to you know build those things so when you look at for example uh, building a product and you want to showcase a uh, onboarding example right so earlier onboarding you could see just flat screens today you can animate those screens right because you know that the person will get a good experience without having to drop that you know having a lag in that experience so being a video first has really transformed the way we think about it and also for example uh, video calls if you look at it right like earlier i back in the days when i was you know starting my career as at least good 5 years of my career we used to think about video as like oh somebody could do video conferencing it was a big thing right now suddenly whatsapp video calling is a norm right or like normal phone calling with video is become a norm and that i think is just going to keep getting more and more right the other thing to also keep in mind and this is something which i think about a lot right is this notion that with this audience that we're designing for brand loyalty becomes a challenge right and um, there is no brand loyalty right they're always on the move they're hooked on the devices and at the end of the day what we realized you know after lots of you know studying this thing is that the great customer service is the only thing that in fact drives brand loyalty right and you know and we see this specifically if you look at the fintech ecosystem which is so competitive right so dynamic uh, there is always going to be you know fight for loyalty uh, and we have kind of understood that right you know the only way to drive brand loyalty is by making sure that your customer service is, is really good right and obviously there's a lot of work to be done across you know consumer tech companies in india as well we are a very ha- highly aspirational society and what we mean by aspiration is you know no matter what state of economic freedom you are at right whether you are in a you know extremely poverty or you are at a you know extremely ultra rich category right at the end of the day you know no matter which position you are in in the economic ladder you are always aspiring to go higher right? and that i think really fuels bharat's growth right where you're thinking about building products which will enable people towards getting better economic empowerment right so when you think of let's say products that help you uh, grow in terms of um you know earning more money so if you look at the trend of people now doing more equity investments because they realize that the return of investment on savings is not long with savings account in the banks and you have to kind of you know build products which help them to kind of level the stock market earn more and you know basically go higher in the economic ladder and this is something which i feel is going to keep driving a lot more we see very few number of people who are still doing um, uh, equity trading uh, and you know we do through our paytm money net uh, product that we have but apart from that you know there's so many other products out there grow is there up stocks is there you know zero tha is there and i think every one of the aspiration of these products is that we'll help you get better returns for your investment so that you can really you know, get better economic freedom right so economic importance economic freedom aspiration to go higher in that ladder is always going to be driving the country and it's been driving that right? if you look at our middle class right went from uh, we are now almost like 800 million people in that middle class bracket itself right Uh, and that's kind of just kind of mind boggling i also feel that you know by virtue of all these things the fact that we are more video first by the fact that we have more access to internet it's all in our hands we are more exposed society today right and gone are the days when we would assume that you know somebody in a bangalore or a delhi or a mumbai will only be the people who will have more exposure right we could be sitting anywhere in any part of the country and have access to a similar tool right? in fact when you look at you know uh, in april 2020 Uh, india had the highest amount of youtube audience right almost 467 million users engaging with the purple sort uh, of engaging with youtube right and this number was probably the second was us and then after that it was uh, uh, indonesia of course but they may not be using it in china but if you look at the number right almost the like 500 million people using youtube and primarily trying to access of course there's access content in terms of educational content in terms of learning content at the same time just to get their exposure because the more you explore using these video content the more your mind kind of opens up right and obviously what that does it suddenly opens up travel right so paytm travel we've seen like a growing number of 
uh, you know, increase in the way people think of the traveling, both locally as well as internationally, right? I think it's going to become a lot more because the more exposure you have, the more income you have, the more exposure you have, you will want to spend it, right? And people will start doing that. So those kind of trends really help you think how can you design products accordingly. Changing behavior with all of this, you know, there's people are traveling, there's consuming more content. So there's obviously a lot of changing in behavior that's happening. In fact, the change in behavior is really real, right? And you need to just step outside to experience it. Just step out of your home, go to the markets, go to the malls, go to the you know, trains, uh, at the airports, any place you go, you will see this change in consumer behavior. Right? And it's important for us to understand that, you know, what is the context with which this is happening? Right? And what is the culture shift that's actually driving this change to happen? Right? And um, uh, when it comes to uh, designing products, uh, these become some things which you always um, keep in mind. And no matter what people say that, you know, one India, United India, everything is the same, we have to accept this fact that we are a very complex nation. Right? And it gets very complex because when you want to build any products for Bharat, it involves you know, dealing with a lot of complexity. Right? And complexity comes in different forms. So there's people who are different, right? There are products around the country, right? There are processes around the country. State governments sometimes function differently. The political landscape is different. The socioeconomic landscape is different. The beliefs that people have in different societies is different. So the diversity can be a bane, can be a boon as well, right? So it's a bane if you think that's a challenge. It's a boon if you think that you can leverage it to kind of, you know, create some, something interesting for them, right? So obviously, and the products that you want to build, it has to make sure it's affordable for people, it's accessible to people, right? Uh, and the fact that, you know, the processes involved in building the product should be such that there's a low learnability curve, right? Because if you look at the education data, right, we are almost about like 75 to 76 percent of literacy rate in the country. So still, people need to kind of spend some time in learning new products. So you cannot build a complex product in a complex society, right? You have to build a simple product in a complex society so that people are able to adopt that product uh, a lot more easily, right? And I feel that you know only when you spend enough time in that system, you are able to empathize with that layers of complexity. Right? So why does a you know uh, uh, why does a person behave in a certain manner? Why does a shopkeeper give credit to somebody but not give credit to somebody? Uh, why does you know um, you know a teacher have a certain audience? Uh, why do people behave in a certain manner? And all these things really give you some interesting insights. Right? And last but not the least, you know there's this whole major push that we have towards you know the whole uh, inclusive uh, digital India, right? And there are a lot of things which is out there. Now, if you remember all the ten points that we talked about, there is higher amount of internet penetration, higher amount of better devices that you're using, more wireless subscription. Uh, people are being able to consume data, people are getting more exposed. And what's that going to happen is there's this new thing that's been, you know, in the, it's not very new, it's been around for quite some time. But this other substantial shift that's been happening is around the notion of digital lending. Right? That's why you see many of these lending products out there. Because when the whole idea of open credit enabled network, OSEN, basically uh, came about, the whole premise was that for all these audiences whom we are you know, trying to build products, they will now want to do something, right? Like they may get exposure and say, okay, I've, I saw about this interesting product that was built somewhere or this new business that I saw somewhere. I might want to try it out. I might want to do it, right? But they don't have access to capital. So what OSIM really does, and that is where you'll see a lot of, you know, the flip cards of the world, the credits of the world, the patrons of the world, phone pills of the world, everybody giving credit to people because the moment you have access to digital lending, the moment you have access to credit and capital, you can then eventually build multiple stuff. And then that the premise is that will basically be driving a lot of the uh, innovation that happens in smaller towns and countries as well, and, and states as well. And then of course there is the you know, the open network for uh, <clears throat> the digital commerce, right? The ONDC, which basically again is the saying that you know whichever part of the country you are in, you could basically leverage the platform to kind of create products and then sell to a much wider, larger audience. Right? So eventually, if you start looking at you know, the UPI, the ONDC, OSEN, you know, uh, there is the India stack, all of these coming together to make sure that we are able to create products for Bharat better. And then Bharat also is able to kind of you know, do this uh, in a much, much more integrated way. So I think you know, fundamentally we should question, right? Like all these new systems and solutions that we're building, we all want to solve a problem, but eventually the problem should be such, the solution should be such it should create a long lasting impact in the system. If you look at something like Paytm, something like Google, right, they've all created long lasting impact.
because it has transformed the way we think about, for example, financial transactions, right? Or the way we think about email, the way we think about search, right? I think, you know, there is a huge responsibility around that, that we can actually aspire to create products and services around it, right? And what I firmly believe is, you know, we as designers or people who are creating or building for Bharat, we will create these tools and then eventually these tools will basically shape us, right? So we shape our tools initially by building for Bharat and eventually the, the tools will basically shape us. Right? I think, you know, the moment you start looking at the world around you, the, 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 the environment around you, uh, a lot of things uh, will make sense. Right? So when it comes to environment, uh, I talked about three very important lessons or three important frameworks which kind of uh, I get inspired by. Uh, there was this very famous uh, guy called uh, Kurt Lewin. And he has this very famous uh, you know, equation. Not many people know about it, right? But I love to talk about it because it kind of influences the way we think about you know, building products, right? Uh, and he says that, you know, you cannot control the person. Be, be as in behavior is a function of the person and his environment, right? And you cannot control the person. Or you cannot change the person. But you can design the environment. And if you design the environment accordingly, the behavior will change, right? Or vice versa. If you feel that you know you want to change the person's um, uh, behavior, you can actually just change the uh, change the environment, change the environment around them. And we see this considerably. Right? The moment we think about, like I led the merchant ecosystem design team. Right? So whenever I go to do user research in the in the industry uh, out there in the markets, trying to understand users, trying to understand their environments, it gives me some very interesting insights. Right? And that <clears throat> is able to think how can we build products around. Them. Uh, the second one is something called Flynn effect, and uh, this guy called James Flynn, right? And he had this very interesting theory, uh, which said that, uh, and if he found a lot of studies, and he kind of had this, you know, his life work was around this notion that um, IQ test, like IQ levels of the people, kind of increased generation after generation, right? And when you apply that similarly, if you look at the country today. <clears throat> The fact that we are able to build these products, the fact that we are able to create these products and people are able to use it without much of a training, right? that just tells you that their IQ levels have also gone high. Right? Uh, obviously, IQ is not the very best way of evaluating your usage and access, acceptance of your product. But <clears throat> I do feel it's an important fact to tell that you should keep thinking about building products which people will start uh, using. Right? And the last but not the least, I think, is the you know behavior model, Fox behavior model. This is one of my favorite. Right? He says, you know, um, the behavior of a person is dependent a lot upon their motivation, their ability to do stuff, and the triggers that you give to them. So somebody might have a very high motivation, uh, but they find the task to be very hard to do. No matter how much of a trigger you give them, they will not be able to do it, right? Or if someone has very high ability, but a very low motivation, no matter how much of a trigger you give, they may not be able to do the task, right? And I think when you start thinking about these things, it's a little bit deeper. Of course, these are like, Things I talk about more in my, you know, classes and lectures, and you know, sometimes that I do. But just to give you an overview, that these things really help us to think about the way we think about building stuff. Right? Uh, when it comes to, you know, persuading, persuading our our uh, merchants to really use our products, you start thinking about what would be the motivation, you know, what could be triggers, what, how do you design the entire service day as a design uh, around it. So I think that you know there are a lot of challenges and opportunities that we have as designers. Uh, first of all, I think we should always think about how deeply our solutions is integrated with the existing system of users, right? And, you know, when you think of any product that you build, right, specifically when it comes to Bharat, they have an existing system, right? So is your product very deeply, intermediately integrated with the system? So this is basically you're looking at a very behavioral level. Right? So something like a Paytm or any of the fintech products that we think of is very deeply integrated into the lives. Right? Versus something might be at a very superficial level, right? a very short term, you know, immediate thing. Uh, which is out there. So just questioning, where do we want to create that impact? Do we want to really go at the behavioral level and be very hands in hand with that person's life or keep it in a very superficial? Also, you know, think about how easily we can make the users give up their resistance to change and adopt new things. Because this is something which is going to happen. No matter how hard we try, change is not going to stop, right? We need to keep thinking, how do we build products so that people can give up their resistance? Uh, I remember people used to resist using Paytm or people used to resist using any of the fintech products because they felt that, you know, money was not safe or, you know, there were frauds and things. Obviously, there was few instances of those, but then, by and large, right, there was a mindset shift that also needed to happen. So, I feel that, you know, as incomes rise, India as a country, as the economic thing rises, aspirations will rise, right? 
when aspirations rise, spending rises, uh, there will be need for more credit. Uh, lending will rise, credit worthiness will become a buzz, more capital will become available. I think all these trends need to start spotting. Uh, of course, this is mostly in the cases of fintech and the digital lending ecosystem. But I think at the end of the day, we need to keep thinking about how do we build more and more uh, products, right? So in quick conclusion, I think consumer tech will continue to shape us in many more ways than we can imagine. And this is just the, I would say, we are barely scratch the surface, uh, technology is going to get more, more, more deeply into our lives. Uh, great products will change behavior, right? And I think some of you probably are familiar with this uh, uh, product out there, uh, the Soundbox. Uh, I mean, who would have thought, right? Like a simple voice notification product, it doesn't do anything, right? It just does a sound notification, right? But that simple insight enabled us to create the Soundbox. Of course, now there are a lot of competition out there. And then we took the feedback of the Soundbox 1, we designed Soundbox 2 and then took the feedbacks on Soundbox 2 and then designed Soundbox 3, which is the last, the latest in the market right now. I think the you know, user feedback really helps you make the products better. But before you come to building a product, it's important to seek insights from the industry, from the market, from research as to what kind of product you might want to build. One other thing which was kind of a very deep insight that we kind of leveraged is to saying that simple thing like personalization makes us happy. Uh, and this is one of the recent, you must have seen a lot of QR codes uh, around the markets which actually have the ability, you can actually put your photograph out there. You can put your brand logo. Some people put their own faces out there. Some people put, you know, in fact, the most number of QR codes I've seen, people have the photo of uh, Om Namah Shivai out there, right? And just show that people value their, you know, workplaces as their, you know, temple. As well. So a lot of these interesting insights that we feel uh, when you look at as a, as a country, even though it's a complex country, um, there's a lot of interesting things that you can build, right? Uh, this one last product that I want to talk about from our uh, my, my product team that I work with uh, is this uh, POS machine. Um, I recently, today morning itself, I was, I was talking to a merchant who actually had sound boxes and he had a uh, you know, POS machine. And this guy was actually never doing any credit card transactions. And on the POS machine, you can actually enable voice notification also. Right? So basically, if you enable voice notifications, you actually don't, uh, I mean, you may not need the sound box. Some people kind of feel that, right? So people are able to decide, right? And if you can, you know, reduce the clutter in people's life by building and creating simple products, which can really give them some interesting, you know, ways of doing business, I think it's a great achievement that you can do, right? So behaviors, I feel, you know, changes are habits. I've started to eat more Pani Puris because I'm never worried about uh, going and having to pay because I know that you can always pay through Paytm or, you know, any of my funds. So, and eventually, even I myself am very fond of anyone and everyone is fond of Pani Puris, right? That's right. So, that's uh, you know, and the solution, uh, you know, while paying, while 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 paying, uh, the sound box uh, and uh, the impact that sound box that this amount has been exchanged is uh, truly, you know, uh, the perfect uh, example and lively. Yeah. And you know, this this creates a mindset also. Absolutely. So eventually, yeah. right, last like the products and solution that you're building for Bharat yeah, yeah. is, is causing this substantial change in the habits across generations. And when I say across generations, I can actually sense because a merchant who is probably 75 plus years old in a shop is now able to use the products that we're building. And that tells you that how that habit has changed, right? People who were doing everything manually now using likes of Khata Pro, Clubs of Khata and other products that we So that really tells you a lot about the country that we have. So that's more or less in that short span of time that I had. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. I hope it was kind of you know helpful in being able to give you some quick insights about how we go about designing for Bharat and building for Bharat and uh, just leveraging all of these into our different products. This was quick, brief, and very well sculpted. Uh, mm -hmm. I had an ecstatic uh, viewpoint on whatever you were displaying. And everyone had uh, loads of questions uh, made be to our Indian uh, arena, our demography, uh, how our economy works and how people adapt, how illiteracy or IQ level is uh, no more a challenge for yeah. people who want to adapt a product and they have skills. Right? So thank you so much, Shetaj uh, Anand. It was amazing to have you on this platform. You had a lovely presentation. At the same time, many things were shared in terms of your knowledge. Uh, I'm glad and many people, you know, uh, I just checked the stories of Instagram as well and people are participating like anything for our quiz or contests as well. Uh, all you have to do is answer all the quizzes that we are mentioning on the stories and tag pepper content and yeah if you you can always send feedbacks for any of the conversations or any sessions which you liked the most and mention on stories like uh, we had this building uh bharat thank you so much uh, it was perfectly uh mannered and perfectly
pleasure conversation uh, hope to see you soon and all the questions which are pending i'll pass it on to you and let's uh, move forward for another panel discussion and that is all about how good design could change and make an impact in your organization thank you so much thanks thank you so much yeah thanks